How's it going everyone? Today we have ticket 6715. This is an M1 Mac Mini that stopped turning on. Now, here's the thing about the M1 Mac Minis, or pretty much all Mac Minis in general. There's no schematics, there's no board views, there's zero information out there. However, the M1s are a little bit special is most of the circuits are copy and paste from the laptop, so we can use the laptop schematics and board views to kind of figure out what's going on. Now, the other tricky thing is we don't have an amp meter or anything to measure what it's pulling from the wall, so we can't really tell what the actual fault is going on, so the diagnosis is a little bit tricky. However, visual inspection is very important on these guys because the signature faults with these guys are usually shorter capacitors around the PMICs. So we're going to go ahead and... Um, Get this taken apart and have a look. So to take apart the Mac Mini, they're pretty simple. Um, probably shouldn't use my nails. It might snap my nail. Um, we're just going to get a, a little spudger and pop off the back panel right here. It's really simple. It comes right out. And then we have um, some screws to take out for this bottom plate. Now, the very first thing I want to do with this device is plug it into 110 volts and see if we get 12 volts from our power supply. Now, the power supplies on these are pretty simple. It's just a 12 volt power supply. Um, so when we plug in our wall adapter, we should get 12 volts on our power connector. And I'm going to show you guys that here. Um, you can see the connector very well. I will show you guys under the microscope, but for right now, you're just going to see the multimeter. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and measure on our pins. And I have 12.1 volts. So our power supply is working. Cross that out. We're not just going to go replace the power supply. I see this a lot from other repair shops on Mac Minis. Well, we replace the power supply, it still doesn't work. Well, yeah, it's a very simple power supply. Buy a, a, a cheap multimeter at the hardware store. Uh, sometimes you can even get them from free for Harbor Freight. Uh, they send coupons for free multimeters. Um, just get that. Check if you have 12 volts. If you have 12 volts, your power supply is fine. It's not the issue. And with just two screws and a couple cables, the board is out. This is one of my favorite machines to work on because it comes out so easy. And this is your this is your Mac Mini. This is your board here. It's a really nice design, and I, I do like it. So anyway, we got to just do a visual inspection, and we'll see if we can figure out what's going on. So most of what's important is going to be on the other side of the heat sink, but I just want to scan through and see if I see anything overly off. That's our 3V8 AON regulator. Again, very similar to circuit uh, to what we see on the MacBooks. Under here, we might have a PMIC, so I'm going to just take off all these shield stickers. Again, these don't worry about these guys. They're fine um, to remove. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and peel this off. I like to try and peel them off so they don't leave behind residue, but it's kind of hard not to sometimes. just want to get a good peel on it from the edge, like so, and then should come right off. And that is the Wi-Fi. We're going to put that right back. Um, sometimes the, you have a PMIC or something hiding under there, but I just wanted to show you guys how to do it. Um, this side, there's really not much to see. Um, we have our three inductors for our 3V8 AON circuit. Um, this is probably a 5, one of our 5 volt, and we have our two NANs here. Um, that's probably NAN power, something along there, along those lines. But our most important thing is getting this aluminum plate off to have a look at the heatsink, or what's under the heatsink. So let's go ahead and do that. We have our heatsink off. Um, now we're going to inspect. So our main areas of concern on these devices, let's get this in focus, is going to be around some of these PMICs right here. And specifically, what we usually see is a bad capacitor right around this area. But usually it's pretty visually apparent, and I'm just not seeing that here. It looks pretty decent. Um, what we have to do, this is interesting though, so this inductor is cracked, um, so that could definitely be part of the issue there, but that makes me think, how did that happen? Did it crack from heat? Did it crack because the device was dropped? We don't know, um, but I'm just going to quickly inspect around here. So we're looking for any signs of flaws with these caps, and just don't really see it here. Um, we have our processor. On these guys, looking for anything off. It looks pretty good. So what I can do now is I could probe around for some shorts. So these are our 3V8 AON uh, inductors here. So we'll check those for shorts and just in general around the 
uh, PMIC. It's also important to note, though, some of these rails will be low resistance because they do power the uh, CPU. So that's something we really need to keep in mind when we're measuring around these PMICs. So I have my multimeter sent to continuity mode. I'm going to put uh, one lead on a good ground, and then I'm going to probe around here. 0 0.37 ohms and 0 0.40 ohms. So we do have a short around this PMIC. So this is likely 3V8 AON. Yeah, so we do have a short. Like I said, it's pretty common to get shorts there, but we don't have schematics or anything. And I could actually see our short is on 3V8 AON. Okay, so our short's really on 3V8 AON. We're at 0.45 ohms, essentially nothing. So again, we don't have the ways of, you know, plugging a USB-C in and, you know, applying power or thermal, so we're going to have to inject voltage here. So I'm going to inject voltage to any one of these three coils. It's not going to matter. Um, I just want a good spot to measure or to um, inject power into, and we don't want a little component. We want a big component that can handle a lot of current. So I am going to put a little flux, and then I am going to solder my voltage injection wire after adding a little leaded solder to the inductor. And then we are going to eject a little voltage and thermal image this. That is, if our thermal imager wants to cooperate when I'm streaming. Um, for whatever reason, it, it does not like when OBS is open, so I can't always show the you thermal, unfortunately. Um, sometimes it'll cooperate, sometimes it won't. It really depends. Um, again, it's a thermal camera from China that's originally from Infrared, but it's, the software is not the best unfortunately so not much we could really do about that but if it cooperates I will show you if not we'll find our short with the good old-fashioned q-tip and alcohol which is pretty effective but overall not as sensitive when we're injecting voltage um, injecting voltage and trying to find it that way then uh, you know q-tip and alcohol is usually sufficient if we're just relying off USB-C power then it's usually not sufficient we need a highly sensitive thermal camera so I'm going to start out at 1 volt, um, 1 volt and uh, 5 amps, and we will go from there. Uh, we don't want to just dump 3, 4 volts into the board when we don't have to. So I'm going to start low, and then if nothing gets hot, then we will go up from there. So I'm just going to solder my wire on here, just like so. Make sure it's not touching anything. It doesn't have to be the prettiest joint, guys. It could be a rough joint. It's As long as it's making the electrical contact, that's all we care about for in for this purpose. All right, so sadly, um, our thermal imager does not want to work when OBS is opened. Um, works with OBS closed, but when OBS is opened, it does not work, so we will not be using it. Um, instead, we will be doing it the old-fashioned way with some Q-tip and alcohol um, and feeling around. So this is how you can find short circuits pretty easily. So I'm pulling 3.4 amps, uh, which is more than enough to find something getting warm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to feel around the board. So I'm going to touch around the PMIC. I'm basically just going to feel around with my fingers on several different areas of the board and see if I feel anything getting hot. And overall, I don't. Um, so we're going to go over here on this side. And something over here just burned me. So whenever something burns you, that usually means we have a short. And experienced eyes may have already seen it, um, but you can see it right here. See that cap? See how one looks pretty ugly, right? Sizzles right off of it, right there. See that? There you go. So if we look at visual signs of a bad capacitor, Usually you will have a darkening of the um, end caps right there. Okay, there will be some discoloration, and usually you will have like some sign of cracking, like right there. See how there's a crack in it right there? See that? Just flaked right off. Okay, and usually you'll have some darkening, and the filament will be discolored. That's a normal cap. That's not a normal cap. Now, typically on capacitors like this one side will be ground and one side is on power and their only purpose is to just smooth out any 
little noise that may incidentally come into the line. Okay, so let's say um, you have a solar flare, right? Okay, it introduces some electromagnetic uh, interference that causes the voltage to kind of get a little ripply. The capacitor's job is to filter that out. Now, for most cases, um, these filtering capacitors can be left off. Um, in this case, we do not know what value this capacitor is, so if we just put a random value, a guessing value on it, we could actually cause damage to the device. So in an instance like this, we're going to remove this capacitor, and this device is going to live a very happy long life without it. Um, it is not important, um, but... Okay, we have ground one side, both sides are grounded. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this guy off. Um, so I'm just going to get my hot air. I'm going to get a little bit of flux, not a lot, just a little bit. And we are going to remove it. So let's just get just a tiny bit. There we go. That's all we need. And that is a done deal. That is off, and we're good to go. So that, I'm about 99% sure that's the, the only issue with this device. I will go ahead and check for a short again. We were pulling 3 amps before. I'm sure now we'll pull 0. I'll just go ahead and test again with our power supply. Yeah, 0 0.37, that's close to nothing. Um, so that's not an issue. On our multimeter, I'm going to probe in the same spot, and you will see we are going to have zero there now not zero but then it goes up okay so 250 ohms and climbing yeah whenever we have a little residual voltage left in our circuit then we'll have issues like that not issues but we'll have a little resistance misread and now yeah now we're in the kilo ohms now we're at 80 kilo ohms so we're fine uh, i'm gonna go ahead and desolder this wire and we should be good to go so like i said this device was in for data recovery and this is most likely going to be a complete recovery restoration of data i don't see any aspect of how this data would have been affected um, by anything here um, so we're going to go ahead and reapply the thermal paste clean it up a little bit and uh, put it back in the enclosure and you will see that it works and this is uh, we'll go back to the customer um, fully recovered on a little side note, that is the capacitor-shaped blister left on my finger when I was feeling around for a short circuit, since our thermal imager software does not work properly. Um, kind of a little souvenir of fixing a device. All right, so we have our board back in the enclosure. I'm going to go ahead and plug in our power, and we are going to power this machine on. So you should hear a chime here. There you go. Um, I'm going to pop up this image right here and then switch over to our HDMI here um, so you can see that this machine works. And there you go. And it booted. So I had this plugged into our HDMI capture card. Um, and, you know, it's just a good way of showing you guys that it does work. Um, obviously, I'm not going to show the customer's name. That's why we have that uh, image of the CPU there. Um, but all looks good here, and this looks to be fixed. Um, on any of these new devices, when we boot into the OS, our data is fine. Um, there's no, like, in-between because how the M1 and the T2 boots off of um, its, like, internal OS, you need the SSD to work. So if your SSD does not work, you will not boot. Anyway, this one's good to go. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.